going to look at now is how we can relate linear variables to angular ones. So we've seen the analogy between the two, but now we want equations which have both types of quantities in it so that we can convert from one type to another type. So when we're considering distances traveled, the way to do this is actually with the arc length of a circle. So if something's undergoing circular motion, moving in a circle, then it's tracing out a circular path. And so the distance it's traveled, S, is related to the angle it's turned through, theta, through our equation S is equal to theta R, where R is the radius of the circle, S is the distance it's traveled through and theta is the angular displacement, so the total angle it has traveled through. Now to relate the velocity to the angular velocity, we can just differentiate this equation. So when we differentiate the distance it's traveled, we get the speed. So ds dt is equal to v. And then when we differentiate the right hand side, we've got the derivative of theta r with respect to time. Now, when we're considering something undergoing circular motion, the radius which it is at is not changing. So dr dt is just zero because r is a constant. So this tells us that when we're doing the derivative of theta times r, this is the same as r times d theta dt. And we've seen that d theta dt can just be written as omega. So this gives us the equation v is equal to r omega, which we saw when we were looking at circular motion previously. Now acceleration gets a little bit more confusing because we have two different types of acceleration. So before, when we were looking at uniform circular motion, which means circular motion where it's not speeding up, it's got a constant angular speed, we saw that the acceleration was directed back towards the center of the motion. So that is a radial acceleration, which we also call the centripetal acceleration. And the centripetal acceleration, same thing as the radial acceleration, is equal to v squared on r. Okay, so any object moving around the circle at any speed has a radial acceleration directed towards the center of the circle, which is given by v squared on r. If the velocity is changing, then this centripetal acceleration will also be changing with time. Now our equation v equals omega r tells us about the speed of the object around the circle. So to make this a velocity, we need to consider its direction. The speed was in a tangent to the circle. So that is a tangential speed around the circle. So if we now consider what happens when we differentiate our equation v is equal to omega r, because that's going to give us a acceleration type quantity, that needs to have the same direction as the velocity, because differentiating it isn't going to change its direction. So we have dv dt is equal to the tangential acceleration, so directed as a tangent to our circle, which is equal to d omega r dt, and once again, r is not changing, so we can pull it out the front of our derivative. So we've got r d omega dt, and we've seen that d omega t dt is equal to alpha. So we can say, well, the tangential acceleration is equal to r alpha. Now, for the case of uniform circular motion, the omega is not changing. So alpha, the angular acceleration, is zero, so we have no tangential acceleration. So for the uniform circular motion, we only had that radial acceleration given by v squared on r. But if something's starting to go faster and faster and faster, then it does have a tangential component. So we've got two types of acceleration at right angles to each other. We've got the radial directed towards the center and the tangential, which is a tangent to the circle. If we want to find the total acceleration of an object which is rotating, then we need to add these two together, which because they're at right angles to each other, we can just do with Pythagoras' theorem. So this tells us that the magnitude of the total acceleration is just equal to the square root of the tangential acceleration squared plus the radial acceleration squared. So let's have a look at an example of a problem that we could solve using this now. 
The question is, the angular displacement of an object is described by theta is equal to 0 0.100 t cubed as it rotates about a pivot point 2.00 meters away. Part A, write an expression for the angular speed of the object. B, write an expression for the speed of the object. C, write an expression for the radial acceleration of the object. D, write an expression for the tangential acceleration of the object. E, what is the magnitude of the acceleration of the object? Okay, so we have that theta is equal to 0 0.100 t cubed and that the radius is equal to 2 meters. And in part A, we're right, asked to write an expression for the angular speed. So we want omega, which is equal to d theta dt. So we're differentiating our expression for theta here, which is 0 0.100 t cubed with respect to t. So this is just differentiating something which is cubed. So we end up with 3 times 0 0.100 t squared. So the 3 comes from the initial cube here, which we move down the front when we differentiate it. So this is equal to 0 0.300 t squared. Part B then asks us to write an expression for the speed of the object. So the speed V is equal to omega R. And we just calculated omega in part A. So omega was 0 0.300 t squared times R, which was 2 meters. So this is equal to 0 0.600 t squared as our speed. Part C then asks us to write an expression for the radial acceleration of the object. So the radial acceleration is the same thing as the centripetal acceleration, which is V squared on R. And we've just calculated V squared in part B. So that's 0 0.600 T squared or squared on R, which is 2. So solving this, we end up with 0 0.180 T to the 4. Okay, let's just scroll up to give ourselves a little bit more room to finish this off. Part D then asks us to write an expression for the tangential acceleration. Okay, so the tangential acceleration is equal to dv dt because the velocity was tangential. And so this is equal to d omega r dt, which is equal to r d omega dt, which is equal to 2 because 2 is r times d omega and omega we found in part a. So this was 0 0.300 t squared dt. So this is 2 times the 2 and that second 2 comes from here. That's that one. This one's this one. And then we times 0 0.300 times t. And so this is equal to 1.20 t. And then finally, part E asks us what's the magnitude of the acceleration of the object. So the acceleration is equal to, we've got the square root of the radial acceleration squared plus the tangential acceleration squared. And this is just using Pythagoras because the radial and the tangential are at right angles to each other. So we can just substitute in here our answers from C and D. So we've got the square root of 0 0.180 t to the 4 squared plus 1.20 t squared. So we have got the square root of 0 0.0324 t to the 8 plus 1.44 t squared. Let's pull t squared out as a common factor. And then because we're taking the square root of it, we can pull it all the way out the front as t because the square root of t squared is t. So we can put t, just scrolling up, we can put t out the front and then we've got the square root of 0 0.0324 and we've got t to the 6 left plus 1.44. So there's our expression for the magnitude of the acceleration of the object.